All right, we are recording. So, looking at the laptop again, because, uh, well, it's come time to, uh, try flashing, which should be, should be fairly easy to flash the, uh, 1UP60 uh, HSE, the 1UP keyboard 60% ANSI uh, PCB I was provided by 1UP keyboards, and I just have, you know, this is the QMK configurator page for it, that's its default layout, and we can see right here on layer 2, it's the reset, and I also have the layout that I built for it, and it's still right there. So I can put it into the reset mode, and then here we have the QMK toolbox, which is right here, if you click on that, you are brought well, not actually to this page, but to this one. That's the larger GitHub repository for it. And what I will be flashing is not this thing, but the firmware from Via. So here's the Via homepage, can I use via.com, firmware downloads. It is right here, the very top one. So I downloaded that, and yeah, you just click on the link. It's not like it opens up something different. Have it in a folder already, and have it selected. And I'm pretty sure this might not work. We'll see. I do that. Okay. So, you do need to put it into flashing mode. I think I saw at one point there are some keyboards that it can, like, tell it to put into the flashing mode. But anyway, let's put, uh, put it into that by hitting the reset button. There. Yep. So it sees it. Flash. That views be it. Is that it? Was it really that simple? I, mean, I knew it was simple, I just want to make sure what the end is. And this is the QMK uh, documentation flashing keyboard. I mean, it certainly looks like it's done. Yeah, validating success, so, okay. And just to... Alright. So it is working there. Hope via. I don't think I have anything on the desktop I need hidden. But let's see. Alright, so that does see it all. Now, this did reset the layout. But, if I go here... Hey, that is working. This is what was not working with the firmware it came with. I could mess with the key map, so I actually might be able to load up um, something I had before, but I could not alter the coloring. Yeah, look at all these options. So there's Night Rider 1. Oh, so that is. Oh, okay. It's a little... Not entirely what I was expecting. So you've got uh, two rows of RGB LEDs on the bottom. And what it's doing is on the first one, it's basically going um, counterclockwise and then clockwise, starting at 6 o'clock. And it's just going around, which is not what I would expect for Knight Rider. Not seeing much different going to 2. How about 3? Seems to be more just the speed. Okay, let, let's actually see what happens if I turn this up, which, too, you can't see it, only I can, but. Hmm. Is it okay? Just a simple breathing. But yeah, it is live changing, which is exactly the thing that uh, it was not doing with the original firmware. Which you can get fairly easily. Um, I mean, technically, I think it might be the same as if, you know, I would just compile this default layout. And I have also compiled my own um, versions of the firmware, which, hey, if you're seeing this, this is in, probably either in the article or has a link to the article where I go through doing all that stuff. Alright, what else have we got here? I mean, th there's a lot of options, and you can actually uh, set up to disable some of these. I'm not sure if it can get as deep into the different gradients being disabled. 
but um, being able to turn off. Okay, so that's just alternating between left and right side being lit. Um, which can turn things off, like the, um, you know, breathing, you can turn off rainbow mood, you can turn off, you can turn off the effect groups, if not the specific kind. Alright, so RGB test is just putting it through red, green, and blue at full brightness. Alright. That was very simple. It really, really was very simple. Which I figured, so I'm definitely glad that I was correct. Alright then. So that's how you flash firmware onto at least this PCB. The others should be... Well, this controller that's on the PCB. The others should be fairly simple as well. I don't feel the need to do it with the NK65. Maybe I will at some point, but uh, right now, though, that's how you do it on this one. So, uh, yeah, just remember that, you know, yes, QMK uh, Toolbox does see the uh, keyboard initially, but you do need to put it into the reset, which is right here. And it'll either have a switch, a uh, key that you can press in a layout somewhere. This is on layer 2. For the NK65, it's actually on layer 1. But then it doesn't really use layers 2 or 3. There's also a physical switch on the uh, PCB. Don't remember if I got a good picture of that or not. I don't think I did. But uh, it is on there. I couldn't get to it with the case built, though. Um, and there are some other means as well, which I think are mentioned yeah here are different methods as well that you may need to may need to try here but you know it's all right here in the documentation it's really really simple really really approachable even if it is intimidating to be flashing firmware it's not that bad really all right not even 10 minutes with and that's with a lot of me just talking see you next time